Hello everybody, Dr. Don Klum here with YourWellnessTribe.com. Here we are going to go over the third video in the Hormonal Man series. I'm going to start my timer so I don't overgo and, and use too much of your times. So what we've been talking about is the concept of the irritable male, of the hormonal male and how that expresses itself and how we can actually start to work towards solving it and towards recuperating from it. First thing men out there need to know, it's not your woman's problem. Women, what you need to know out there, when your male hits this change in behavior, hits his moody epic of his life, and starts to see these changes where he can go from nice to terrible in one second, where he can change his mind, where he can just seem to be irritable and nasty for no reason, like the grumpy old man syndrome, just understand that it's, that is a, a process that's going on within his body. He might not be aware at all that it's going on, and women, you need to know it's not your fault. Even if he blames you, you didn't do this, this is not your issue, this is his issue, but you're part of this because you live together. You guys share the same space. You're part of his life, part of his world, part of his reality, so there's, there's something to learn on both sides. Today's topic specifically is going through brain chemistry and how this influences irritability and anger and outbursts in the man, in this irritable male complex, but also it's the same pathway that drives a lot of the issues we have with chronic stress, whether you're a man or a woman. It also is the same pathway as getting stressed, overused, and creating workarounds as addiction. It doesn't matter whether it's food addiction, carbs, sugars, or other foods, or it's physical addiction such as alcohol, tobacco, and drugs, or it's behavioral addiction such as gambling, internet use, and things like that, it doesn't matter what it is, they all stimulate the same pathways. And these three things, the irritable male cycle, chronic stress in men and women, and the addiction cycle in men and women, all share some very similar pathways that get really worked up in this process. I'm gonna show you what that means. So here we have the brain chemistry, right? We have the brain right here going down through the spinal cord, and this, the, believe it or not, one of the biggest influences on how your brain works, how clearly you think, how well you can remember something and how your attitude might change comes down to energy. Energy. Yeah, when your brain, brain uses a lot of energy, it needs a steady flow of energy, whether that's coming from glucose in the form of sugar or it's coming from ketones from fat burning, which we prefer, if you've seen our other videos, it needs a lot of steady energy. Energy, energy, energy. And it's not the energy highs, like when people go on a sugar binge that actually throw it off. It's that, it's that resulting low that follows any high that does, and we'll go into that in a second. Another thing that drives brain function and can affect it on a very subjective level is in how we remember things, how, we, how edgy we get, how well clearly we can, we can think is our, is our nutrient needs. Because the process of using that energy uses a whole lot of different nutrients and cofactors and different elements to process that energy. That if they're not there, the brain and the cells will start to cut corners and use alternate mechanisms to get the energy that it needs at all cost because it means either living or dying. So it will, it will down-regulate itself to a lower process to get that energy. It's almost like if you have a high-performing vehicle, if you're driving around in a Ferrari, what do you put in that car? You put in the highest octane, highest quality fuel you can, but it's like taking that Ferrari now and saying, oh, well, I got problems going on. Maybe it's economic or I can't get to the fuel source that I want, and so I'm going to downregulate the super. And then, same thing, issues keep going on and there's problems in the road, and so then I downregulate to plus, then to regular. Then I start trying to put leaded gas in there. I just keep downregulating the quality of my fuel in this high-performing vehicle. What do you think happens to that vehicle? It has problems. Just shifting from the super special high level to plus, you'll see a change. Never mind going all the way down and then eventually, you know, having serious problems. The brain does the same thing. It starts cutting corners and doing things it normally wouldn't do if it had all the nutrients it needs to make the highest energy possible to keep it running. So keep that in mind. And then we have the addiction cycle. The addiction cycle, now think of the addiction cycle as anything that stimulates that pleasure reward cycle in our brain as dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It has to do with serotonin and GABA and some of the other ones, but it's a pleasure center, it's a reward center. And believe it or not, what actually triggers that reward center in our brain for the addiction cycle isn't whatever you're doing. It isn't the action, so it's not placing your bet when you're gambling. It's not surfing the internet when you're online. 
It's not the actual drink of the alcohol or the hit of the drug. It's not. What it is is the anticipation for that. Believe it or not, they have found that out scientifically through a lot of research that it is the anticipate. We actually stimulate that mentally just before we do whatever we do that we become addicted to. And that can include food, that can certain foods. And then once we get that food or do that action and it reinforces that mechanism, it gets, all, gets even more powerful. And the more sporadic or the more unpredictable that that outcome is, like gambling, the reason gambling is so addicted to people is because you don't know if you're going to win. So there's a question there. Same thing with food. You don't know if it's how it's going to respond. You don't know what it's going to do. And so it has that same variable in there. It's very interesting, but that's a whole other topic, right? So the addiction cycle, same cycle for all of these. It ties into the energy cycle, the nutrient needs, and how they play on each other, okay? And that's a big deal on how we think, how we behave, and how we act. So how do we make sure we keep that in good shape? Whole foods. Now, what does that mean? It means no processed foods. If it's made by man or in a factory or in a lab or in a can or a box, got to double check that and make sure it's a whole food. Whole foods is a real food. Remember, even whole foods today are not what they were a hundred years ago. Never mind a thousand years ago, never mind 10,000 years ago or beyond. The apples that you can buy in the store right now did not exist 200 years ago or 500 years ago or never mind, in the Paleolithic times. They are literally 50 times sweeter because we have bred them that way. We like the sweeter apple, so we keep growing those lines. It's not genetic modification, it's selective breeding of this. Same thing, you look at broccoli in the store. That broccoli didn't exist a long time ago. Broccoli used to look more like a leafy asparagus than it does a big head crowning flower of broccoli. So we've created this and there's been a downside. The constituents of those foods, the nutrient density, the fiber count has all changed. So it's even more of a reason to go whole foods, high nutrient density eating. Big time. Fuel the nutrients you need to supply that energy, keep the cycle in check, and keep that brain opti sharp and optimal. You follow me? High fat. Why? All our internal organs, but especially the brain, is made of mostly fat. It's almost entirely fat. It's almost entirely, the majority of the fat is saturated fat. You know that bad fat that we've been demonizing for 60 years? Well, it's stop because that, your brain is mostly that and it needs mostly that. It's mostly cholesterol of all the fats. Go, go think on that one for a while. And so we need that. Good quality fats keep the raw building blocks of your brain in there, as well as all the cell membranes for every single one of your cells of your body, your organs, and it's also the most effective fuel source to run our entire body, including the brain. The whole glucose dependency thing in the brain, we got to get past that. It is not the absolute that we thought it was, all right? Ketones can do it a lot better with a lot less friendly fire in the process, all right? So high fat, whole foods, and then you want to make sure to avoid low blood sugar swings right? So one of the biggest reasons we get l real low blood sugar is not from not eating sugar, believe it or not, your body will keep that blood sugar high. It's from eating a lot of sugar at one time and getting that rebounding low. You pump it up, then when it comes down, it goes past neutral and down low. And that down low brings down our energy, especially in the brain. Low blood sugar in that rebound state brings down the brain's energy, it doesn't have the fuel, the force, what it needs, the blood-brain barrier, that protective sheath around your brain, keeping bad stuff out and keeping good stuff in, gets lazy. It, it's as normally as a strong guard, but it kind of puts its guard down when it doesn't have energy. And things that shouldn't get in there do and can. And things that should stay in there can come out. Not a good thing. We don't want that. That can really affect the nutrient needs and the, our ability to keep that energy at a stable rate and keep that brain functioning the way we need it to. Right? So avoid the low blood sugar swings by not hitting high ones. So stay away from the processed sugars, the grains, anything that turns the sugar really quick. And if you're going to eat that stuff, eat some w with other foods in there. Fiber in particular, a little bit of protein and some fat, and it will help that peak not to go too high and get that consequent low. All right? But it's better not to do it at all But that, if you're going to do it that way. And then excitotoxins. Excitotoxins, just like me, are things that stir you up. They get you going. Excitotoxins excite your brain cells so much that it'll actually end up killing it. And enough brain cells that die together is called brain damage. Excitotoxins normally are kept out of the brain, but in that low blood sugar state, when that blood-brain barrier drops its guard, they can get in overstimulate the brain and brain cells start to die but before they die they get all amped up they start to hyper react they start to 
budget their nutrient needs. They take in more energy, leaving the other cells with less. There's a whole chain of events that happen. We want to avoid them. So the most, the most obvious or the, or the most common excitotoxins out there are food colorings of any kind. But the number one is caramel coloring. So check your foods that you're eating and you're taking in your body and your supplements. And if it has caramel coloring, get rid of it. So get it out of your kids' hands in particular, especially things like the fake uh, maple syrups and fake uh, syrups and, 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 fl and different uh, sweeteners for kids, watch for that. Other excitotoxins out there are anything with aspartame, artificial sweeteners. Okay, big time excitotoxin. There's a, there's a lot of them out there. Glutamate, so MSG is probably the biggest one out there. Monosodium glutamate hyperstimulates this reaction. You want to set off a kid who's susceptible for hyperactivity like that, give them some MSG, throw in some more excitotoxins like uh, food colorings or caramel colorings and a little bit of artificial sweetener, and he is off to the races. You can time it on your watch how, how long it'll take before they go off. All right, so avoid those excitotoxins. And then for the to support the... The addiction cycle, you got to keep your lifestyle and your exposure to insulin low. We want an insulin-friendly lifestyle. Very important. Everything we talk about is framed around an insulin-friendly lifestyle, right? Low sugar. Because of the way it impacts the high blood sugar, and bringing it down low, affecting the brain, you want to keep that sugar exposure as low as possible. Sugar and simple sugars and carbs and grains, low, 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 low. So you want to increase your sleep. Sleep is your brain's secret weapon. Your brain actually literally shrinks down up to 60%. Like a flower when it's facing the sun and at night comes down like this. So do your brain cells. So it has space in there to send the cerebral spinal fluid around to detox and clean your brain out. Go into your lymph and get out of your body. If you don't sleep, that doesn't happen. Talk about a dirty mind. It starts to build and you start to affect your ability to think clearly, to remember things. And of course, your mood and irritability can go off the charts as well. Make a plan. Remember, when men, in particular, I'm talking to you, when you're in that cycle, when you're in that no man's land, when you are in that negative spiral where everything is bad, doom and gloom, and if it doesn't happen to you out there, man, I'm happy for you. But speaking as a man, I know I get in that state. I know that spin that starts to happen to me mentally. The first thing I can do, if I can detect that, I need to make a plan. If I'm in a discussion with my wife or my kids, I need to step out because it's not going to go well at all. And then I'll be coming back saying, hey, sorry about that. I changed this and that. I don't want to be there. So I step out and I make a plan. Even if it's a plan to make a plan. Whatever you're working on, whatever's got you triggered, make a plan, take some steps, take a walk, dissipate it, and start to move forward. All right? We talked about hormones. Hormones drive this, especially in the man. The hormones we're talking about, insulin and cortisol, they're tied together. All right? When one goes up, it drags the other one. So you get stressed out, you're dragging up insulin. You're eating poorly or doing the wrong thing and you're, insulin, and you're not having an insulin-friendly lifestyle. You're bringing up insulin. That's dragging along cortisol. And when you do so, as soon as insulin goes up, it's going to drop this teeter-totter of human growth hormone. You're going to push it right down. You don't want that. This is our youth. This is our anti-aging. This is our recovery. This is our repair hormone. This is what we want high and as often as we can, especially at night when we sleep. All right? You follow me? So keeping that low will allow human growth hormone to go high. And we're going to go into further series on how we can bring human growth hormone up through our physical activity, our exercise, and other activities as well. Anti-aging, right? At the same time, cortisol is here. And when cortisol goes up, it drives down testosterone. Men, that's not a good idea. We already have nine testosterone cycles, and this is one of them. We don't need to mess with it any more than they get messed with as it is. So we've got to keep that down. So that's stress. You can't avoid stress. Stress isn't bad. It's neutral. It's how you react to stress, how you framed your thinking about stress. So we can work on that. That's, that's further studies. I mean, further series going on. But keep the stress levels down. Keep the insulin down so it doesn't inadvertently bring up cortisol, which will also push down tests. Because when these guys go up, these both go down. Teeter-totters, remember? And that's not a good scenario for men or women because women need testosterone just as much as men, just in their own proportions, in their own profile of their hormonal, uh, hormonal self. All right, so I hope that helps you. Brain chemistry is huge. It's a huge topic. I'm already 14 minutes in. I wanted this to be under 10 minutes. I'm going real fast. We're going to keep expanding upon this. This is the third video in the Hormonal Man series. Hope you like it. If you like it, share it. Share it out. We want to get this word out to anyone we can. Let, let people know we're doing these videos. They're completely free. They're available to you out there. If you like them, go to yourwellnesstribe.com and join everything. Join our tribe. We want you in our tribe. We want you a part of this and get on the newsletter and so forth. 
and just you know comment. If you have questions, shoot them over. If you have some questions about your man or about yourself, man, or your woman or anything, or and you don't want to put it on the feed, I get that. A lot of you have been private messaging me. Keep doing that. I might send you back a voice recording. I might write back to you. However, I will get back to you. You can do that. Feel free to do that. But don't don't just guess and don't put it off. If you have a question, either put it in the feed or contact me directly. Hey, I love doing this. It's a holiday weekend. Have a great time out there. Uh, enjoy the time with your family, and we'll see you next time, Dr. Don Klum, yourwellnesstribe.com. Thank you.